Hello all. In the previous video, we learned why API. Because by using the Acrobat Sign API, you can easily embed the functionality of Adobe Acrobat Sign into your applications and custom workflows. Using the Acrobat Sign API, you'll be able to create and manage agreements, retrieve signed documents, embed the Acrobat Sign UI, set reminders, send agreements in bulk, download audit trails, archive signed agreements, and more. Because Adobe Acrobat Sign API allows you to create apps, embed the Acrobat Sign UI and functionality into your applications and customized workflows, so you use Adobe Acrobat Sign as you need to use it for your specific use cases. That's the flexibility and the power of Adobe Acrobat Sign's API. In this video, I want to put some of our Acrobat Sign API calls to work. So I'll show you how they work, giving you the ability to use our API to integrate within a widget that you're building to give that widget Acrobat Sign functionality. So in this video, I'll show you a simple signing ceremony. I'll send an agreement out for signature and collect legal signatures from within the Acrobat Sign UI. Then I'll show you how that specific functionality in the Acrobat Sign UI relates to specific API calls. I'll also show you where you can test our APIs to see how they work before you drop them into your widget. And lastly, I'll remind you where you can get a free developer account so that you can begin exploring all of these functionalities as they relate to your specific use cases. So let's take a look. As seen in the previous video, when we go to the account tab and scroll down, we can find information on our Acrobat Sign API. So I'm going to come here and select REST API methods documentation. And this is where you'll find comprehensive information on our APIs, but this is more than documentation. So when I scroll down, I can access our resources and operations, and I'll be able to test our API calls. So I can test transient documents, agreements, library documents, workflows, webhooks. There's a lot that you can test here. But in order to perform these functions, you have to make an API call. So I'll open up agreements. And here you're going to see post calls and get calls. So in the API world, a post call is doing something to our server, saying, uh, I want to upload something to sign, or I want to use Acrobat Sign Services to do a function. In the get calls, when you see that, that means that you want to retrieve something from Acrobat Sign. OK, the best way to show you how you can test our API calls is to really do it in context. So I'm going to do a simple signing ceremony from the UI, and then I'll make the connections between the Acrobat Sign UI and the API calls that it's making. So when I send for an agreement, I start with a recipient. We'll make this recipient James T. And I'm going to upload a file. So I'll choose a file, NDA for API v2, and I'll open that up. Now, when I come into our resources and operations, I can make that API call using the transient document endpoint. So I'll open this up. Now, before I can do this, I have to authenticate. So I need to come over here to my OAuth access token. And this is a method of authenticating, but it also does more. It allows you to do specific things within the Acrobat Sign tool. And that's defined here by the scopes. So scopes are just different levels of access that you can have within Acrobat Sign when you're uploading an agreement. So I can write to an agreement, I can sign it, I can widget write, and I can also library write. And I want to have access to all these functions because I'm going to upload a doc to Acrobat Sign. <clears throat> now I'll authorize that. OK, so you can see here that I'm authorized. Now looking at all these parameters, if they're not in bold, then they're nice to haves. If they are in bold, you do have to have them. And there's only one, and that's choose files. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab that exact same file, NDA for API v2, and I'm going to open it. OK, so now I'm going to hit Try It Out. Try It Out is actually making the API call. So this is the same as adding that document in the Acrobat Sign UI. So hit Try It Out. First thing I do is look at the response code. So this says 201, or 200 would be good. So I know now that it's a successful call. Now under the response body, I can see my transient document ID. And I'm going to need this moving forward, so I'm just going to carefully come in here and grab this. I want to make sure that I get it all. <clears throat> OK, so now that I made that call, now I need to finish the process. So now I need to get an email address. I need to define what role 
recipi the recipient is going to play, and also their signature type. So I'm going to come in here and I'll go to my agreements endpoint and I'll grab this first one. So this agreement endpoint ends point, this allows you to create an agreement and send it out for signatures and then returns the agreement ID in the response to the client. So you can see here I'm already authenticated. Okay, but now this is still in bold, so this is required. Well, where do I get this information? I'm going to come over here to my minimal model schema. So when I select minimal model schema, I'll see that JSON payload that I need to use to send out an agreement. And this is data that we need to send with the agreement. Okay, who I'm sending it to, their email address, the role in the document. And all this information needs to be sent over before I make that API call. So the minimal, minimal model schema will show you that basic information in the JSON payload, this bare minimum information that's required to make that API call. So I'm going to click here, now it'll populate over here. So now I can edit this information. I'm going to come in and I'm going to pop in my transient document ID. So I, as I did before, I'm going to come down here and hit try it out. Okay, so now I'm getting an error. Well, why am I getting the error? It's because I don't have everything that I need. Okay, so there's specific requirements that have to be met or you won't move forward in the signing ceremony. And these are the required parameters that I need to add them all. So this uh, error message is just going to tell me what I need to do moving forward. So the first thing I need to do is add that transient document ID, which I already did that successfully. Okay, here it is. So now I just need to go in and I need to, it's always a good idea to name these. So I'm going to call this July 6. And I have one participant and their role that they're going to play is going to be signer. And notice this is all caps, so I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. Now under email, I'm going to put in James's email. And then scrolling down, the signature type is going to be e-sign. And once again, that's in all caps. And the state, well, we want to do this right now. So the state is it's in process. Okay, so that's the basic required information. But what if I want to um, add parameters for, say, authentication methods, for example? The Acrobat Sign UI, as I say, very user-friendly, but don't let that fool you, okay? It has a lot of features. And to include them in your JSON payload, you can go here. I'm going to go to Complete Model Schema. So when I click on that, I'm going to get every single parameter that I could use regarding the payload. And all this is just actual agreement is information, sorry, about the actual agreement and what you can add to it. So if there's authentication methods, any provider names, for instance, passwords, country code, there's a ton of information here. That is a side note over here. Any information not filled in here is going to be ignored unless it is required. Okay, so how do I know all this information? Well, I'm going to come here to model. And I can open this up and I can see all the different parameters. So under file info, it'll tell you what each parameter means. So if I come down here to signature type, I can see the values of each parameter. So in this case, it's going to be e-sign, all caps, as I keyed in over there, or it can be written. And I can see a little more of these. If I come down and create a date, you can see what is required. When I scroll up, I'm looking at these implementation notes, and these are all going to give you information about the payload. So in this case, with this payload, you are in process because you're going to immediately send out the agreement. Now, one other thing I want to show you over here is the participant sets info. So this is going to tell me the order, uh, the role of the signers, etc. So if you want to know what you need to put into that payload, come to the model, open it up, and look at this uh, information for assistance. Okay, I think I'm ready. So I'm just going to collapse this so I have room. Now I'm going to hit try it out. Okay, 201, no errors. That's what I look at first. So now I have successfully sent this agreement out for signature. So what you saw me do via the API is, I come up here, I grabbed my transient ID, then I sent this agreement out for signature, and then it's out for signature. I've got everything here rocking and rolling just like I want to. And now if I come here to my Manage tab, I can open open up my manage and I can see in progress 
I can see that July 6th document is now out for signature. Okay, so now I'm going to sign the agreement. So this has been sent out. I'm going to go to my tablet and I'll open up the email and I can see at very top, signature is requested on July 6th. So this is a, playing the role of the recipient. The recipient does not have to have anything installed, download, nothing like that. They just have to have a working email on a tablet or phone. So now they can open it up and it might take a minute for this thumbnail. Here it is, it's just your garden variety NDA and now they can sign down here. So when they click to sign, there's a couple ways they can sign. They can draw. James is very bad at this, so we're going to get rid of that. You can also upload an image, or you can just key in your name with the keyboard. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit apply, and then finish, and then tap to sign. Okay, so now James is good. It says now he can download a copy if he wants to have that, and he would also get the accompanying audit trail. Now when I go into my Manage tab, I can now go into Completed, and I can see this July 6th agreement is completed, and here's James' signature. Okay, I still want to do a couple more things. I do want to look at the status of the agreement, and I want to look at its audit trail. Now I could download it here, but I want to do it via the API. So I'm going to come back here, and I'll go into Agreements, I'm going to do a get. So I'm going to come here and that's my agreements get ID. So I'm going to come here. I need to grab my my ID and I can place it in here. Now I won't be able to do anything with it yet because I'm not authorized. That is required. So I'm going to come here and reauth and I have to do it because I'm doing something a little different. Agreement read. So then I hit authorize. It's going to authorize and everything looks good here. Okay, so um, I don't, by the way, I don't have to add a schema because I'm only doing a get action here. So what they're saying to me is tell me what agreement you're interested in and we'll show you the status of the agreement. So all I need for that is just to paste in the agreement ID. Okay, so now I'm going to hit try it out. Once again, I go to my response code first, which is the 200. And now in my response body, I can see all this information. Here's the name of my agreement, the agreement type. Moving down, I can see James's email and his name. There was no authentication method, but I know James did have the role of the signer. And then I can see also that the status now of this is signed. So to put this in perspective uh, with your custom apps, you're going to write some code to build your interface. And then you're going to insert the API calls to say, I want to know that if I click on a specific button to know the status of an agreement, I'll be able to get it. And you can build it however you want. And I want to know from Adobe the status. So my code makes the API calls and returns that status of the specific agreement. Okay, a couple more things. What if I'm interested in the audit trail? Then I'm going to come here. I'm already authorized. And I'm just going to paste in that exact same agreement ID. Come down here and I hit try it out. And I can see under the response body, first my response code is 200. And the response body, it allows me to download this document. So when I open it up, here's my audit trail. So the audit trail is going to show me every step of that signing ceremony when it was created, emailed, viewed, signed, and completed. Also, here's my transaction ID, the status is signed, and this is who created it and when it was created. So you have a complete audit trail here, and also this proves the legality of this document also. All right, so what you just saw me do via the API is I uploaded an agreement, moving up here real quick. I uploaded agreement here with my transient documents. Then moving down, I send it out for signature. Then I managed the status of that, and then I looked at the document and I uploaded, or downloaded rather, an audit report. So I can do this here in the finished Acrobat Sign UI if I want to. It's been created by talented Adobe developers. They built really a great UI. But if you want to build your own widget and our, insert our code into it, that's when you can come here and use our API calls. Okay, you've been able to do some API testing. Now you will want to create a demo account. So you can come here, and this is where you can work out any issues that come up in your integrations before you go into your production account. So here's your developer account, and this is free, which I always found is a pretty good thing. 
So all you need to do is just come here and fill out your form. And you'll give us your basic information, and then you'll use this drop-down to just to tell you why you want to be a sign developer, whether for Acrobat Sign integration only, so if you want applications to work with Acrobat Sign, or you can select OEM Embedded, which will give you, you the ability to natively embed Acrobat Sign functionality into your platform, mobile app, or your website. When you are approved, which only takes a few minutes, you'll receive an email letting you know. And this is a pretty good email. Not only is it a welcoming email, but it will also speak specifically to why you became a sign developer. So for example, if you want to build a connector to Acrobat Sign, you have a link to the step-by-step -step process to do that. If you want to include e-signature functionality into your application, we can educate you on that process. For either one, you can come down here and you can click View Resources at the bottom. And this will take you right to our developer site. And you'll see right away links to our OEM Embedded Partner and Integration Only Partner. Now scrolling down, you can also learn about the other customer experiences using our API. You can access API samples here. You can view e-signature workflows. And you can also learn a lot about our security. So this is a great page for you to bookmark. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I showed you how to test the Acrobat Sign APIs from within the Acrobat Sign UI. You also saw those API calls as they compared to the functionality in the Acrobat Sign UI. And using the API, I sent an agreement out for signature. And lastly, I showed you where you can get a free developer account so you can get started testing our APIs. So get in there and play around and you'll see why API.